content warning, I will be reading historical facts, some of which some find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, it's FamCam, and I'm going to be reading you 50 historical facts that will warp your sense of time. I am a huge fan of Adorian Deck, if you don't know who that is. Link to his channel in the description. He does a lot of shorts where he reads off facts that will mess with your perception of time, as he puts it, um, as well as comforting facts that will make your day, disturbing facts that may ruin your day, interesting people you may never heard of. He did one where a guy from Southern California started his own country called Slow Jamistan. <laughs> I put it in quotes because it's not officially recognized by the United States, and I believe most other countries, maybe some, I don't know. But anyway, without further ado, let's get reading 50 historical facts that will warp your sense of time. And by the way, I will link this article that I'm reading down below in the description as well. It's by Madison Toyer of Stacker.com. Okay, let's get to the facts. The Last Guillotine and Star Wars. The last execution by guillotine in France happened after the premiere of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, adopted by Louis XIV as a humane method of execution, really. The guillotine remained in use for nearly two centuries, dropping for the last time on September 10th, 1977, nearly four months after the first Star Wars film hit theaters. That's mind-blowing. I did know about this, but it's still blows my mind every time I hear about it. Oxford University and the Aztec Empire. One of the most renowned universities in the world, England's Oxford University, has existed in some form since 1096, the year 1096. In 1231, the masters were officially recognized as a universitas. The Aztec Empire, which is commonly thought of as the oldest empire in the world, wasn't established until 1430, nearly 200 years after Oxford officially became a university. I knew about this too, but again, still blows my mind. I promise there's going to be some that I didn't know about. Fascist Spain and Microsoft. From October 1936 up to Francisco Franco's death in November 1975, Spain was ruled by a fascist dictator. Other notable fascist dictators include, I'm not going to repeat their names, on the other side of the pond. On May 1975, Microsoft was founded by Americans Bill Gates and Paul Allen. The contrast between the development of these two countries at this point in time was stark, to say the least. I will say, I also knew about this as well. <laughs> but I didn't know that much detail about it. Okay, the fax machine and the organ trail. Okay, this one I am not familiar with. I mean, I'm familiar with those two things. I'm not familiar with this fact I'm about to read. The first major wagon train of nearly 1,000 pioneers left Elm Grove, Missouri, and set out to follow the Oregon Trail in search of a new future in May 22, 1843. Five days later, on May 27, 1843, Alexander Payne filed his patent for the fax machine. It's crazy to think that newly arrived pioneers could have sent a fax to their East Coast family to let them know they ride safely. That blows my mind because I thought that fax machines weren't really a thing until like the late 80s, early 90s because of Die Hard. Holly told me to wake up and smell the 90s. That quote was in reference to using fax machines. <laughs> and yet the patent was filed in 1843. 100. 50 years, roughly, prior. Whew, that blew my mind. I'm going to have my mind blown more and more throughout this video, and I'm sure you will too. Okay, this is another one I know of, though. Starry Night and Nintendo. One probably wouldn't associate video games and 19th century oil painting with the same moment in history, but they'd be wrong. Vincent van Gogh painted this masterpiece of Starry Night in 1889 while staying 
at a mental asylum the same year that Nintendo formed as a corporation, although Nintendo's first project or product was actually playing cards, not PlayStations. Okay, whoever wrote this is probably not a gamer. <laughs> Nintendo did not make PlayStations, although they almost did, because the PlayStation was originally going to be an add-on for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or the SNES, SNES, or Super Nintendo for short. <laughs> Nintendo made a rookie mistake and decided to work with their rival Philips instead of Sony, and Sony got revenge initially by trying to work with Sega. They turned them down too, and they just sites, you know, it's screw up. PlayStation's gonna be our own project. And they freaking killed it. Hit it off the park right away. Nintendo really missed a big opportunity with PlayStation. So, had this paragraph been totally accurate, Sony PlayStation wouldn't exist in the form that it does. In hindsight, I'm glad things went down the way they are because as much as I love Nintendo, I do love PlayStation as well, not as much as Nintendo, but I do love PlayStation as well. And I'm glad it exists and competition is objectively good in this industry, in every industry. But I won't get into the logistics as to why, but just, I encourage you to do your research on that one, but let's move on. Kubla Khan and New Zealand. New Zealand was one of the last places on earth to be settled thanks to radiocarbon dating Archaeologists have been able to determine that Polynesian explorers first arrived around 1250 AD. That is true. At the same time, Kula Khan, one of history's greatest conquerors and the ruler of the Mongol Empire, assumed leadership of his homeland. Damn, I would have thought that the Maori, even the Maori, weren't at New Zealand until long after Kubla Khan, but apparently not. They were there around the same time. The abolition of slavery and the iPod. In 2001, Steve Jobs changed the world when he launched the first version of the iPod with room to hold 1,000 to 2,000 songs. That was super mind-blown at the time, believe me. At a battery life of 10 hours, the first generation iPod now sits in history museums. Five years later, when the sixth generation iPod was launched, slavery was abolished in Mauritania, the last country on earth where it was still legal. Well, in the most blatant form, I'm not going to get into the logistics of that either, but yeah. And while technically the practice is criminalized here, uh, Mauritania, I'm probably saying that wrong, uh, Mauritania is still widely regarded as the slavery's last stronghold. Interesting. That was in 2001. Former Slaves and World War II. World War II officially began in 1938. Although America staved off any involvement until 1941, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the, the, the Emancipation Proclamation and slavery officially became illegal, officially. With the passing of the 13th Amendment in 1865, it stands to reason then that there would have been many former slaves alive at the time of World War II. Those who had been slaves as children would have been in their late 70s and early 80s by the time America be uh, became involved in that war. That I actually knew. In fact, uh, apparently the last known... Oh, actually, I should shut up because this is the next fact. I'm about to spoil it. This is another one I knew. Disney World and Sylvester McGee. On October 1st, 1971, Walt Disney World opened in Orlando, Florida to massive fanfare. Fifteen days later, Sylvester McGee wildly acknowledges the last living former slave in America died in Columbia, Columbia, Mississippi. Damn. Again, I knew this and I was about to talk about it. I'm glad I looked at my phone and saw that that was the next fact. <laughs> but anyway. Woolly mammoths and the Egyptian pyramids. The pyramids of Giza remain one of the world's biggest mysteries. How exactly were they constructed without modern machinery? Built between 2550 and 2490 BC, the pyramid 
lines were completed during a massive flurry of construction. They were also built when prehistoric woolly mammoths were still walking the earth. The last Ice Age creature died in 1650 BC, 900 years after the pyramids were complete. I actually knew this too, but it's still my book. Thank you, Adorian Deck, for spoiling half of these facts for me. <laughs> Next one. Chinese guns in the Battle of Crecy. I probably butchered the pronunciation. It's spelled C-R-E-C-Y. We tend to think of weapons development as fairly linear, but history shows that is anything but the case. The earliest known bronze gun that employed gunpowder was from the early Yuan Dynasty and dates back to 1332. Whew. Meanwhile, the French versus English Battle of Crecy, which ended in 1346, was revolutionary for its use of the crossbow, a brand new weapon at the time. Next one is Samuel J. Seymour's Secret. On April 14, 1865, when Samuel J. Seymour was five years old, his parents took him to a production of Our America's, American Cousin at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. The same night, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. In 1956, Seymour recounted the experience and on the CBS game show, I've Got a Secret. Damn, I actually heard about this one. I heard about this one. Um, I don't think I've seen the clip, though, but I would certainly like to hear what his thoughts were. Discovery of Vitamins and the Sailing of the Titanic In 1912, Casimir Funk had a major scientific achievement. He discovered vitamins the same year the Titanic set sail from Southampton, England. And in all, 1912 was a great year for medicine, but a bad year for transatlantic voyages. Yeah, I'll say, wow, I had no idea that vitamins were known for that long. I always thought that they were discovered closer to the 60s or the 70s when Linus Pauling, and take what I say with a grain of salt with this, because I'm only repeating what I heard on Adam Ruins Everything, although that show cited their sources and always corrected themselves when they were wrong, which they were at times. But, according to what I saw on that show, Linus Pauling, a doctor from the 70s, really popularized vitamins, and I guess that got me thinking that maybe he discovered them, but apparently not. Death by Firing Squad and Toy Story 3. This is another one that I know. In 2004, Utah, the last state to do so, changed their death sentence laws, outlawing death by firing squad. Ronnie Lee Gardner, however, had been sentenced to death prior to the law change and still had death by firing squad as an option for his educa education execution. Quite the contrary. He chose this route and was killed on June 18, 2010, the exact same day Toy Story 3 premiered in theaters. British Colonization of America and Shakespeare Wildly regarded as the greatest English language writer of all time, William Shakespeare died on April 23rd. 1616, in Stratford-upon-Avon, which means that the poet and playwright was still alive when England became, began colonizing America. Jamestown was established in 1607. I actually did know about this one, too. In fact, when I was in my late teens, I visited England and went up to Stratford-upon-Avon, and I actually stood in Shakespeare's backyard on the exact spot that he keeled over and passed away. The exact spot. I also went to his burial site. It was actually indoors. And there's a poem. I don't remember what it all said, but it ended with, Cursed be the one that moves my bones. Meaning, if you move his bones, you will be cursed for eternity. And no one ever moved his bones since. Isn't that amazing? Fall of the Roman Empire and the discovery of America. The Eastern Roman Empire, a.k.a. 
Byzantine Empire fell in 1453. Forty years later, in 1492, Christopher Columbus landed in America. Well, the Americas, not the United States. Contrary to what a lot of us were taught in school. <laughs> Meaning that plenty of people who thought of themselves as Romans, one of the oldest civilizations in the world, heard of the discovery of the new continent. The discovery. <laughs> people were already there. Pablo Picasso and the Dark Side of the Moon. One of the most influential artists of the 20th century, Pablo Picasso, died in 1973. This is the same year Pink Floyd released their iconic album, Dark Side of the Moon, making 1973 a major year for art of all kinds. I'll say, Pablo Picasso also lived long enough to play Pong, which is truly amazing. First McDonald's in Auschwitz, Birkenau. On May 15th, 1940, brothers Dick and Maurice McDonald opened a small hamburger stand in San Bernardino, California, called McDonald's Barbecue. Within a month, on June 14th, 1940, the first group of prisoners, 728 Poles, were transported by German soldiers to the camp. That's really depressing to think about. One of the biggest burger joints of all time, same time as one of the most tragic events of all time started around the same time. Isn't that, that's just crazy to think about. Country of Italy and the development of Coca-Cola. In 1861, the various states of the Italian peninsula unified themselves and Italy officially became a country. Five years later in 1886, Atlanta pharmacist Dr. John S. Pemberton conducted Coca-Cola and sold the syrup to his neighborhood pharmacy. What? Wow. Okay. That does mess with my perception of time quite a bit because, first of all, Coca-Cola, much older than I realized, and Italy, much newer than I realized, because, like many of you, I always think of Italy as some ancient civilization, because it was. But... I guess it was not a country in its current form until 1861. Well, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. I just realized something. It said 1861, five years later, 1886. So either it's actually 25 years later or they messed up one of the dates. Oh, well. Hakuna Matata. Moving on. First, sixth, and sixteenth presidents. John Quincy Adams was the sixth president of the United States, holding the office from 1825 to 1829. On February 23, 1848, Adams suffered a massive cerebral hemorrhage on the floor of the House of Representatives and died in the presence of fellow Congressman Abraham Lincoln. Aside from knowing future President Lincoln, Adams had also known the first president of the United States, George Washington, making him the only president to know both men. Wow, I had no idea about any of that. Dang, the only president to know Washington and Lincoln, the two, arguably the two most iconic U.S. presidents of all time. Mozart and American independence. Okay, this one won't mess with my perception of time at all because I knew Mozart was famous in the 1700s. In the 1770s, as America was gearing up to establish their independence, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was at the height of his career. From 1773 to 1777, Mozart was employed in the Salzburg court, and in 1781, he began working freelance in Vienna. Meanwhile, Americans were signing the Declaration of Independence and fighting a revolutionary war. Yeah, I knew that they were both around the same time, but I didn't know they were at the same time. That's mind-blowing. Completed Human Genome and the Sentinelese Tribe. In 2006, the Human Genome Project published the sequence of Chromosome 1, the last and largest piece of the human genetic code. This huge announcement for science and technology came at the same time as the news that the Sentinelese tribe considered one of the last uncontact contact tribes in the world that killed two Indian fishermen who ventured too close to their island from which outsiders are banned 
from approaching. Damn. Oh, is that the is that the tribe that's on that island off the coast of I wanna say Indonesia or Malaysia? Um that no outsiders can ever really contact without being absolutely annihilated. Yep. Yep. That's those guys. Just leave them alone. Just let them be. Let them live their life. That's all I can say. Calculus at Oxford. One would imagine that all the great universities would have calculus among their course offerings. But for the first several centuries of Oxford's existence, they didn't offer the complex math. The reason Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wil Wilhelm Leibniz hadn't developed it yet, they both came up with their ideas in the 1660s and 1670s, but didn't publish papers on their ideas until the 1680s. Calculus is way newer than I thought. <laughs> Ottoman Empire and the Chicago Cubs. This is the one I knew. Before their third pennant win in 2016, the Chicago Cubs hadn't won a World Series since 1908. The Ottoman Empire, which had been established in 1299, didn't fall until 1918 and was still thriving as the baseball team slumped into their legendary drought. Yep, that I knew. And again, still blows my mind. Socrates and Confucius, two of the world's greatest thinkers, we tend to lump Socrates and Confucius into one moment in time. In reality, the Chinese philosopher died in 479 BC, 10 years before the great Greek mind was born in 469. I, it bothers me how they worded that, the Chinese philosopher and the great Greek mind, like, bro, what about the great, what about the great Chinese mind? Because he was also a great mind. <laughs> Come on. That's, it just feels a little racist. But anyway. Spanish flu and World War One, One of the most deadly conflicts in the world has ever seen. An estimated 37 million people lost their lives due to World War One. At the same time, the worst flu pandemic in recent history, the Spanish flu, broke out in 1918. The flu took an estimated 50 million lives worldwide, more than the war, and I think that's more than what COVID took. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. The Model T and the first plane crash victim. On September 17th, 1908, Lieutenant Thomas E. Selfridge, a passenger in a plane flown by Orville Wright, died in an airplane crash. The first person to do so lost his life the same year Ford Motor Company introduced their Model T October 1st, 1908. Damn. George Cluster and the Brooklyn Bridge. In the summer of 1869, work officially began on the Brooklyn Bridge to connect the boroughs of Brooklyn and Manhattan. At the same time, General George Custer was busy waging war with Native Americans out west. Custer took part in his first expedition against the Sioux and Cheyenne in 1867 and continued to fight similar battles until the infamous Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876, seven years before the bridge opened. Damn, it just goes to show. History is a lot more recent than we're led to believe a lot of the time. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. This is another one I knew. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. are heroes, icons who spent their lives fighting for human dignity and compassion. They're widely regarded with the same awe and reverence, and they were both born in 1929. And I believe Betty White was as well. That I knew. The Wall Street Journal and the Eiffel Tower. In 1889, the first issue of the Wall Street Journal was published with much of its space dedicated to the movement of the market. The same year, the official inauguration ceremony for the Eiffel Tower, then the tallest tower in the world, was held and attended by dozens of famous personalities. Also the same year that Starry Night and Nintendo happened. They, could, they, just, they could have combined those two facts together for different things happening in 1889 that you wouldn't think happened.
happened that same year. That's like the ultimate right there. Doctor Who and JFK's assassination, another one I knew. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963. The next night, November 23rd, 1963, the first episode of Doctor Who aired. The episode had to be repeated the following week, as media coverage surrounding JFK's death largely overshadowed the 25-minute episode titled An Unearthly Child. I actually had no idea that Doctor Who was that old until I heard about that fact through a Dorian deck. Seriously, check him out. Link in the description. Fall of Berlin Wall and 9-11. Most adults alive today remember both the fall of Berlin Wall and the terrorist attacks of 9-11. I remember the latter, but I was only two when the former happened, so I don't really remember it happening. Uh... What most don't realize is that the September 11th, 2001 attacks are now closer in the f to the fall of the Berlin Wall, which happened in November 1989, than to present day. I mean, yeah, 12 years lie between the fall of the Berlin Wall and the terrorist attacks, while it's been over 17 years since the terrorist attacks. Harvard and King Louis the 14th, the oldest institution of higher education in America, Harvard University, was founded in 1636 and named after its first benefactor, John Harvard. Two years later, in 1638, Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, was born. He went on to become king at four years old and was most notable for his construction of the Palace of Versailles in France. I actually been to that palace and it is really nice. The whole mirror is really creeps me out though. Rosa Parks and Harriet Tubman. Rosa Parks and Harriet Tubman are both prominent figures in the civil rights movement. While we tend to think of them existing at two completely different points in history, Harriet Tubman was a slave after all. The reality is that the two women did overlap. Rosa Parks was born in February 4th, 1913. Harriet Tubman died in March, on March 10th, 1913. So while it wasn't long, and the two women most likely never came into contact, they were both alive at the same time. First airplane and the first atomic bomb. On December 17, 1903, Wilbur and Oral Wright successfully completed four flights at Kitty Hawk, earning them the designation of having invented the first airplane. Just over 40 years later, on July 16, 1945, the first atomic bomb was tested in New Mexico. Orville Wright was still alive. Okay, I knew all that except for that last part, that Orville Wright was still alive at the time. Dang. The Wizard of Oz and the Yahtzee invasion of Poland. I'm pretty sure if I actually say it, the algorithm will flag me. In fact, if you're hearing bleeps throughout this video, it's not me swearing this time. It's me saying things that I think that the algorithm's gonna get me for. And uh, we don't want that. Anyway. The Wizard of Oz, starring Judy Garland, premiered on August 25th, 1939. A month later, as many Americans were heading to the theater for a relaxing evening, the Nazis were invading Poland. Leonardo da Vinci and Emperor Constantine the 11th Pali... Pali... Palio... Paliologos. I'm definitely pronouncing that way wrong. Constantine was the last of the Eastern Roman and Byzantine emperors. He died in May 1453, the day Constantinople fell to Islamic invaders. Meanwhile, resistance artist Leonardo da Vinci was just celebrating his first birthday. He was born April 15, 1452. Daytona 500 in Hawaii. It may be one of the biggest sports events of the year today, but back in 1959, the Daytona 500 was just getting start. Lee Petty won the race that inaugural year, which was also Hawaii's inaugural year as a U.S. state. Death of Albert Woodson. Albert Woodson served for the Union Army during the Civil War. He passed away in 1956 at the old age of 106. 
The Civil War was an early piece of America's history, 1861 to 1856, and it's humbling to remember that our early history was actually fairly recent. They put early history in quotes. Fair. As of 2012, the government was still paying out Civil War veterans' pensions. Dang. Really? That, wow. Civil War in the first football game. The Civil War officially ended in the spring of 1865 when Robert E. Lee surrendered the last Confederate army to Ulysses S. Grant at the Appomattox Courthouse. Four years later, in November 1869, Rutgers in New Jersey, a.k.a. Princeton, played the first American football game. Rutgers won 6-4. to four. I imagine they had different rules back then unless Rutgers scored one touchdown and didn't get a point conversion and Princeton got two safeties on them, totaling four points. Like, that's the only scenario I can think of if the rules were the same back then, which I doubt there were. Let me know in the comments if you know better. Russian serfdom and the London Underground. In Russia, serfdom, which essentially made peasants slaves to their landlords, had existed since 1649. The Tsar didn't abolish it until 200 years later, in 1861. Two years later, the London Underground opened with a train running between Paddington and Farringdon Street. Dang. Dang. Machu Picchu and the Sistine Chapel. Carbon dating places in the construction of Machu Picchu around 1450 AD, just 23 years before construction started on the Sistine Chapel in 1473. I always forget how recent Machu Picchu really is. But also, I thought the Sistine Chapel was a lot older as well, and I've been into it. Fun fact, when I went to the Sistine Chapel, there was this sweet old man running the place. He spoke perfect English. I expected him to communicate in Italian, but he was like kind of running the place, making sure that things stayed orderly in the Sistine Chapel. Um, you're not supposed to get noisy in there. You're supposed to be quiet to be respectful. But of course, human beings, the way they are, because so many people were in at once, everybody just started talking over and over and over and over again, and, and noise would just build up and build up and build up and build up. And you'd always say, shh, quiet, please. Quiet, please. And as you hear his voice echo through the chamber, people did start to get quiet almost instantly. But then, every single time, within a minute, noise would slowly but surely build back up again until it hits a crucial point, and then he would again say, Quiet, please. And it just happened endlessly, at least throughout the time that I was in that chamber. Obviously, eventually ended because, you know, he had to go home and sleep. All the people had to go home and sleep. <laughs> but still, I found it quite amusing. Anyway, Frank Sinatra in the last episode of Seinfeld. One of the most popular musicians of the 1940s and 50s, Frank Sinatra captures the voice and style of an older gen uh, generation. <laughs> Sinatra died on May 14th, 1998, the same day the Seinfeld finale aired. I had no idea, and I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. That's my favorite show. Has been for as long as I can remember. But I had no idea that the last episode aired the same day as Frank Sinatra's passing. Wow. Women's voting rights in Apollo 14. In 1971, Swiss women were finally granted the right to vote on a federal level. The same year, Alan Shepard, Stuart Rosa, and Edgar Mitchell landed on the moon after the launch of Apollo 14. I am kind of blown away that Switzerland didn't grant women the right to vote until 1971 Switzerland. Come on, I expected better from y'all. But it is what it is. 
I love you, Switzerland. Don't get me wrong. Y'all are cool, but could have given women the right to vote a lot earlier. Say when you gave everyone the right to vote. Anyway, taming of the West and the Victorian era. The Victorian era took place in England from 1819 to 1901, the entire length of the reign of Queen Victoria. At the same time, Americans were busy taming the Wild West, 1865 to 1895. Dang. I really had no idea that those were the same time. Again, I knew they were around the same time, but I didn't know that they were at the same time. Death of Charlie Chaplin and Annie Hall. Movies as we know them today wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for Charlie Chaplin. An early pioneer of the film industry who set many of the standards and practices we still adhere today. Charlie Chaplin died in 1977. Really? It just so happened to be one of... It happened to be that one of the most recognized movies in Hollywood history, Annie Hall, premiered that same year. I've never seen or even heard of Annie Hall. I need to check this out. And I've only seen one Charlie Chaplin film called Modern Times. The only scene I remember is the beginning when he's working in that factory. And maybe one part where he's doing one of his famous funny silly walks that I'm sure inspired that bit from Monty Python. <laughs> but anyway... Mahatma uh, Gandhi, and I will not say this person's name, but you'll know when I read the fact, or if you look up the thing. Anyway, one, an icon of peace, the other, an icon of terror and hate. Mahatma Gandhi, and you know who, not Voldemort, lived at the same time. You know who died in 1945. Gandhi was assassinated three short years later in 1948. At one point, Gandhi even wrote a letter to, you know what, I'm just going to call him a letter, <laughs> like they do on TikTok, imploring him to rethink the war. And good for Gandhi. Obviously, that didn't work, but good for him. Thomas Edison and the Empire State Building. Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, among many other things, well, technically didn't invent it, but he was behind it. <laughs> anyway, that's that's a topic for another day. But anyway, uh, the same year the Empire State Building, which employs thousands of light bulbs, was completed. President Herbert Hoover pressed a button in Washington, D.C. that lit up the tower lights to officially open the building. Wait, he pressed the button in Washington, D.C. to light up the lights of the Empire State Building in 1931. How, I, I had no idea that they had the kind of technology to remotely turn lights on like that. Because Washington, D.C. to New York, that is quite a bit of ways. But anyway, first photograph and the deaths of Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. The first photograph, a blurry muted picture of the view from an upstairs window at photographer Joseph Nisipore Nip. I do not speak French, so I'm not even going to try that. I am so sorry. Uh, Joseph Joseph's uh, Burgundy estate was taken in 1826. This is the same year that the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, passed away five hours before the second president, John Adams, also died. That, that latter fact I knew, but I had no idea that it was the same year that the first photograph was taken. That's insane to think about. Laws of motion in the Salem witch trials. This is the last one, by the way. In 1686, Sir Isaac Newton changed physics forever when he published his three laws of motion. Five years later, the Salem witch trials began in America in 1962. It May strikes one as odd how something so scientific and so superstitious could be happening at about the same time. Yeah. That strikes me as odd. That strikes me as really odd, actually. But... Where's, wait, where's Sir Isaac News from? He's British, right? Let me look 
this up actually. Yeah. Born in Woolsthorpe, England, Sir Isaac Newton was educated at Trinity College, Cambridge University. Okay, so yeah, he was from across the pond. So I guess it kind of makes sense that he's separated from the events of the American colonies. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> 50 facts to mess with your perception of time. It was, some of that was a lot of fun to read. Some of that was really hard to read because a lot of tragedy happened in the world and continues to happen in the world, obviously. I mean, we, if, unless you live under a rock, you know that we are in particularly tough times today. And obviously I'm not going to get so into that. We're not here for that. Um, I just wanted to read you some 50 facts blow your mind in terms of timing with those facts um but anyway thank you so much for listening if you're still here you're freaking amazing <laughs> seriously i mean you're amazing anyway if you watch my content support my channel leave likes leave comments subscribe maybe ring the bell i don't know <laughs> but yeah this video has been quite the journey and until I see you in the next journey, as always, stay chill. Have a good night.